Noise is a fact of life. It is inherent in all physical systems and processes. There's even noise in the way light itself works. That said, while we can't get away from it, there are things that we can do to reduce its impact in our images and video. What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. In this video, we are going to take a look at noise reduction or the video noise reduction that is available on the EOS R5C in Canon's Cinema EOS OS. I know, wait, what? The R5C has in-camera noise reduction? Yes, it actually does. And in fact, it is turned on by default. Now that said, compared to the R5 and Canon's other consumer cameras, the noise reduction settings can be both simpler or more straightforward and more complex. And unfortunately, like usual, the manual does not do the greatest job of explaining what everything does or how you should go about configuring things. Now, unlike on Canon's consumer cameras, noise reduction isn't found in the camera or shooting setup menus. Instead, it is part of the custom picture profile. Now, one important side effect of this is that noise reduction can be configured for each custom picture profile independently. You could have a Canon log profile with it on and a Canon log profile with it off. So if we head into the menus and over to the custom picture or CP menu section, we can then select the edit CP file and then scroll down to find a noise reduction entry. Selecting this, we will find a sub menu with three options available for noise reduction, automatic, spatial filter, and frame correlation. Now by default, these will be set to on, off, and off respectively. So what do these do? Well, if we reference page 135 in the manual, we see that Canon doesn't actually give us a whole lot to go on. So let's start with what the manual does give us. Spatial filter and frame correlation. Now, if you've ever used video noise reduction in software like DaVinci Resolve Studio or Premiere Pro, then you should be familiar with the ideas of spatial and temporal noise reduction. That's what these two settings control. Now, if you're not familiar with all of these concepts, spatial noise reduction operates on each frame individually. It's basically what you have if you're used to working on noise reduction as a photographer. In the simplest form, the image is slightly blurred so that the adjacent pixel values average out, and then that takes away some of the noise. Of course, most algorithms don't just blur the image. They use some more advanced techniques to ensure that they preserve edge detail while blurring out the noise uh, or averaging the noise together. However, since video isn't just one frame, its temporal nature can be used to gather additional information to remove noise. Basically, things move, but we take lots of frames every second. And so because there's lots of frames, things can't move that far. And we can do some stuff to look at what happens in different frames. Specifically, noise is not just random in space, but also random in time. This means that the same pixel in two sequential frames, even if nothing else in the scene has changed and the camera hasn't moved, won't be the same strictly because of noise. As a result, you can take frames over time, compare them to figure out which values or how to reduce noise at each pixel level. However, both of these approaches do have side effects, as, uh, effects and consequently may not be applicable or fully applicable in every situation. To start with spatial noise reduction, what Canon calls the spatial filter, fundamentally does blur the image to remove noise. And as a result, this can soften or remove very fine details. Now, in general, this isn't as big of a deal as it sounds at first. For starters, most spatial noise reduction algorithms are built to try to preserve detail. It's only when the detail is on the scale of the noise that they tend to kind of obliterate it. Secondly, noise also reduces the camera's effective resolving power, meaning that the finer detail is going to be lost to one extent or another anyway, whether it's blurred or it's just the noise decimating it. Now, depending on the ISO, the choice is somewhere between blurred but less noisy or noisy but with just as little actual detail because of that. Now, temporal noise reduction, what Canon calls frame correspondence, has a completely different problem. 
because it works in time instead of space, it doesn't affect the perceived resolution. However, depending on how much things in the frame move and how much of a brightness difference exists between the current and preceding frames, temporal noise reduction can create ghost images, which we also don't want. In general, the best results will usually come from a combination of both methods balanced against the kind of material you're shooting. So for slow paced, nearly static situations, you can use more temporal noise reduction and less spatial reduction to get the most detail. For fast moving situations, you'll want to use more uh, spatial reduction and dial back the temporal noise reduction to keep ghost images or ghost things from appearing. However, both of these settings amount to manual control over the noise reduction system. In other words, you'll need to configure them for the ISO and noise situation in any given shot, at least as far as I can tell. And by default, both of these settings are turned off. Which brings me to the first option in the noise reduction menu, the automatic setting. And for this, the manual has precisely nothing useful to say on what it does or how it works or what it does, only that by default it's on. Of course, with nothing in the manual, I had to do some digging and testing. And as far as I can tell, the auto setting overrides the two manual settings to set some level of at least spatial noise reduction based on what's going on. So in short, what I found is that when automatic noise reduction is on, the two other settings are completely ignored and the camera applies whatever it considers to be the right amount of noise reduction for the chosen ISO. Now, if you want to fine tune the noise reduction with the two manual settings, you will need to turn the automatic setting to off and then dial in the spatial and temporal settings to your taste. So now that we know where the settings are, let's take a look at changing them. First, we'll get to the noise reduction setting by hitting the menu and switching to the custom picture submenu and then selecting the edit CP file setting. And then of course, scroll down to the noise reduction entry. Now to change any of these settings, simply select it in the menu and press the set button or touch it to select it. Now for all of the noise reduction settings, the camera will switch over to a new screen that minim minimizes how much of the menu overlay is displayed so that you can better see the impact of the setting on your image. Now that said, generally speaking for noise reduction, you want to work at something approaching one to one magnification. Unfortunately, you cannot change the magnification while in the noise reduction settings menu. However, if you set the magnification before you go into the menu system, that will persist while you're in the menus. So to do this, if you're already in the noise reduction menu, press the menu button to hide the menus and then press the magnification button. Now, once the magnification mode is enabled to get to one-to-one -to -one magnification, press the set button until the magnification is reached its highest level. Now, once you've zoomed all the way in, press the menu button again, and the camera will jump back to the noise reduction menu. Now you can change the various settings here while looking at their impact at approximately a pixel level. Changes you make to your noise reduction settings will be reflected on an attached display as well. Though, as long as the display is big enough and high enough resolution, you won't actually need to magnify it to actually see the results. Now with this said, what are my recommendations here? Well, currently I recommend leaving noise reduction set to the default setting of automatic. While there may be certain circumstances where adjusting the noise reduction settings may be necessary, I have found that they're pretty much few and far between. Now that said, one place where you may want to consider turning off noise reduction is if you are using sophisticated AI noise reduction software like Topaz Labs Video AI and are shooting at very high ISOs. In those situations, it's possible, though I haven't tested this, that the more sophisticated noise reduction algorithm may be able to extract or preserve more detail in the scene without it having already been obliterated by the camera's simpler noise reduction happening first. Now, of course, you're probably wondering how well all of this works, and unfortunately, I don't have an answer to that yet. I was trying to put together some software to test this kind of thing. However, the libraries that I've used in the past don't support working with 10-bit video. For this kind of testing, especially at low ISOs where noise can be very subtle, having the added precision is important. So proper testing will have to wait until I can figure out a solution to that. 
So I didn't want to leave this without any kind of information or data. So I did do a quick qualitative test. This was shot at ISO 51,200 with noise reduction completely off, auto only. Spatial noise reduction at 1, 6, and 12, so the minimum, middle, and maximum, and temporal noise reduction at 1, 2, and 3 frames. So these were shot in 4K. There is a little bit of downsampling happening here, but otherwise, this is what you would be getting out of the camera. In any event, that is noise reduction on the EOS R5C. If you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that like button and sharing this. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Finally, if you'd like to show your support for this video and future videos like it, please consider hitting that thanks button if you can or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.